for the right section, you notice that there are a couple of icons here that are repeated. So the first thing we want to do is to copy these icons, the SVGs of these icons. So we go to copy, copy as SVG, and then go into VS Code to create an icons folder in the source directory, and then an icon.csx file. Now let's go ahead to create a check icon component. And then we paste in the SVG we just copied. Don't forget to export the check icon because we'll be using it in a different file. The next thing we want to do is to create a component that hold both the icon and text, and we'll call it the list item component. Going into Figma, we'll see that the icon is on the left and the text is on the right. This tells us that these items are horizontally stacked. So we can use the HStack component to lay out these elements. Create a list item component at the top of Python. Now we put the icon and text in HStack. Since we are writing TypeScript, let's declare the props as stack props. And then we'll import the check icon we created earlier. It's a named export, so we just import it here. Nice. To use icon, we use us and specify the value as the check icon we just imported. And then we give it a width and height. For now, I'm just going to go back to Figma to check dimensions of this. So I give this icon a height of 22 pixels and a width of 22 pixels. Finally, we need to destructure children from props. Children will be rendered in between the text elements. So let's do this. And of course, we spread the rest of our props. The final thing we want to do is to give the H stack a spacing as well as the right semantic HTML. So we can see that these are list items, right? So we're going to be specifying the H stack as an LI, which represents list item. And we're going to be giving it a spacing of 20 pixels between the icon and the text. This is throwing an error for icon because we spread rest to the wrong element. So let's move this to each stack. Good. Now that we've completed the list item component, let's go ahead to build out the right side of this pricing section. In Figma, we can see that there's a text and then we have the list items. So let's grab the text. Then to lay out the list items, we'll notice that they have some uniform spacing between them. This tells us that this is a good point to use the stack component. So we are going to lay out these components using stack. And of course, stack is going to represent an unordered list as a semantic HTML. Now we use the list items we just created. Let's see what we have right now in the UI. So let's go ahead to add some uniform spacing. From Figma, we can tell that the spacing is 20 pixels between each of the list items. So we'll pass in the spacing prop and set it to 20 pixels. We also notice that there's some padding between the beginning of this list items and this text. So based on the design, the distance is 24 pixels. So we'll put a padding top of 24 pixels. Let's check what we have. Good, this is making sense and it's looking really good. Now we need to add some padding between the contents and the container, as well as give the content a font size of 18 pixels. You can see this is taking some shape already. Right now, let's center all of this content. To do this, we we'll apply a maximum width to the box wrapping the flex components and also center it using margin auto. Good, this is what we have. 
So we're almost through building out the second section. From Figma, we notice that this section is more or less overlaid on the first section, on the header section. So we'll have to put in some negative margin top. And from the dimensions on our design, this is minus 256 pixels. Right now, you can see there are a couple of things that need to be fixed. First off, this pricing section is covering some content on our header components. So in order to fix that, we need to give this first section a padding bottom. To do that, we need to create an outside container and it's on that outside container or the, or the box that we're going to apply that padding to. So let's create the box. And here is where we'll apply the padding bottom. The dimensions is 112 pixels. And we're just going to move our ass to this box. Cool. So another problem you see is this right section has no background color. So we need to go in and make it a white background color. BG is equal to white. This is already looking good, but there are just a few things we need to fix. So we'll go back to our design and compare. The first thing you notice is that we need to have a border radius around all the edges of this second section. And another is that this text is left aligned. So let's quickly go in to fix them. Here we'll put text aligned as left. Good. Now we need to apply a border radius of 12 pixels. And the reason you don't see anything is because we need to set the overflow to hidden. So we set this overflow to hidden. So right now you can see that all of these edges now have a border radius applied to it. The final thing I want to show you is that in our design, we have a subtle box shadow here and we need to apply that. So say box shadow. Great, so we're almost done and this is what we have so far. Finally, let's switch out this content with the actual content from the design. And here is the final development of the second section. You can see it's looking really nice. In the next video, we're going to be looking at building the final section. So stick with me.